ang bawat isa sa atin. Amen? Amen. Ang sabi po sa Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13, And He gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building, for building up the body of Christ until we all attain to the unity of the faith, faith and of the knowledge of, of the Son of God to mature manhood. Amen. So ngayon kami mga kapatid, tayo na naman po ay um, may energize, may strengthen sa salita ng Panginoon. Um, tawagin po natin ang ating pastor, our beloved pastor Robert, to uh, give us the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, I was glad when they said unto me, Let's go to the house of the Lord. Amen. The house of the Lord is a house of joy, it's a house of solution, it is the house where we have encounter with the glory and the power of God. Recognizing that God is in his holy temple. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The God that we are serving is a caring God. Amen. He is a God of provisions. The Bible says, look unto him all the ends of the earth and be saved for I am God for he is God anytime I read that powerful invitation that Jesus gave to every human being on the face of this earth I am thrilled with that scripture in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 where Jesus said come unto me all those who are tired and heavy laden and I will give you rest. God has prepared a place or well, let me put it in this way we encounter so many problems in this world. We may not have the same problems, but everybody in one way or the other encounter a problem, many problems. But God has prepared one place where he can meet all our problems, where he provide a solution for all the problems we have in this world and that place is Calvary Amen. Calvary that one sacrifice that Jesus offered is a sacrifice to meet every human need today and forever the sacrifice of Jesus and its effect is eternal. It is at Calvary. It is Calvary where Jesus meets the needs of all those who are tired in life. I'm so glad we have come to the right place at the right time, serving the right God with the right people. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, your relationship with God through Jesus Christ is a relationship of joy. No matter how many challenges you face today, no matter how many problems you face today, I am here to made us 
alive in Christ Jesus. We were lost, but now we are found. Amen. We were blind, but now we can see. Hallelujah. Amen. We were enemies of God, but in Christ Jesus, we become children of God. Amen. For the scripture says, for all those who believe in him, he gave us the right to become children of God. Amen. We used to be children of the devil, but thanks be to God, he draw us or he, he, he brought us to himself through Jesus Christ and his sacrifice. Amen. We were under a curse, but Christ came to rescue us from the cash into the blessing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We were on our way to hell, to the place of destruction. But thank God, Jesus went down so that we can go up with him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Bible says, he who knew no sin was made sin for us so that in him we become the righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9 says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sake, yet for our sake, he became poor on the cross, so that we through his poverty will become rich. Amen. We become rich in Amen. Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. He took poverty and made his abundance available to us no matter how I mean no matter how you look at yourself you are rich in the sight of God Amen. I say you are rich in the sight of God Amen. Jesus Christ became weak on the cross so that you become strong with the power of God Amen. I say with the power of God Amen. Jesus Christ was wounded so that by his wounds you can be healed Amen. of every sickness, of every disease, of every virus. Hallelujah! In the place of sickness, he gave us good health. Hallelujah! Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Jesus suffered rejection on the cross for us to be accepted by God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He was arrested in the garden of Gethsemane. Remember what he said. He said, if you are after me, then leave all of these. Don't touch them. He tasted the arrest in the place of his disciples. I'm so glad because he was arrested. Cardiac arrest has no power over you. Amen. I say cardiac arrest have no power over you. Amen. Your kidneys will not be arrested. Amen. Your liver will not be arrested. Amen. Your lungs will not be arrested. Amen. You will never suffer arrest because Jesus took your arrest Amen. and my arrest so that we can give him glory. Amen. Somebody need to give him glory. Amen. Somebody need to give him praise. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Glory! Listen. In the kingdom of God, Christ became your shepherd. Amen. In the kingdom of God, Christ is our shepherd. Amen. What is the function, the responsibility of a shepherd? A shepherd, God and guide, feed and protect. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Jesus assumed these responsibilities over me and you. No wonder Paul said, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody said God will supply my physical need. No, no, no. The Bible didn't say physical. Don't limit God. If you put physical, you are limiting the provisions. It is open provision. Are you with me? Amen. My God shall supply all my needs. Means my spiritual needs. 
my physical needs, my material needs, my financial needs, every need that will arise in my life, God has guaranteed that he will supply every need, every need. As our shepherd, we shall not want. He make us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters. He restores our souls. He leads us on the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Are you with me? Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we fear no evil for he is with us. He promised he will never leave us nor forsake us. He is with us. His rod and staff comfort us. He prepare a table before us in the presence of our enemies. He anoints our heads with oil. Our cup runs over. Surely, surely his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell, we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Do you know that we are going to dwell there forever and ever? Hell is behind us. Heaven is before us. Hallelujah. I say the worst is behind you. The best is before you right now with Christ Jesus. I say with Christ Jesus. He paid the worst price for me to have the best in life. Jesus endured the worst on the cross so that me and you will have the best with him. I say with him. I say with him. That's why I began by telling you, no matter where you see yourself or what you have gone through, or even going through right now, you are still better with God. Better with God. And God that we serve has already revealed himself again and again and has proven himself again and again that he is the God that is more than enough. He is more than enough. Let the church discover the joy that belongs to us because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Pray. Tonight is like I'm preaching in a cemetery. <laughs> a cemetery is the place, if you are looking for a quiet place, it is the cemetery. I believe that this is the house of the living. Amen. This is the house of the living. The living. Not a cemetery, not the house of the dead. It is the house of the living. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's take our Bibles. And let's go to Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. If you are there, say amen. Amen. Isaiah chapter 5, I'm reading the verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. And they are honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with text. My people have gone into captivity. God is speaking here. I believe that God wants every human being on the face of this earth to have the best of God. God doesn't want you to live below his best. He wants you to have his best in your life. But it takes knowledge to discover what God has prepared for all those who love him. 
If you read the scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, he says, For we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is from God, so that we may know. We will know, or we, other translation says, we may understand the things that are freely given to us by God. Listen to this. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Why? That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Do you know that there are things that God has prepared for all those who love him? God has got free gifts for us, but this gift will not come through natural means. It takes God to unveil to us the things that he has prepared for us. And it takes the Spirit of God to unveil, to reveal to us all the things, the precious things, the wonderful things that God has prepared for all those who love him. And I'm so glad the Spirit of God dwells in us. We didn't receive the Spirit of the world. Through the new birth, we receive the Spirit which is from God so that we will know, we might know all the things that are free given to us by God. Praise God. Amen. The scripture that I read to you, it says, God says to his people, he said, my people have gone to captivity. They are supposed to live in freedom. They are supposed to live in joy in my provisions. But here they are. They have gone into captivity because they don't have knowledge. Hosea also repeated the same thing in Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Tonight, I have good news for you. We don't need to go into captivity but the, because the Spirit of God is giving us the knowledge. The Spirit of God is giving us the revelation that we need to have in order to have the best in this life. The Spirit of God is a spirit of revelation. He come to unveil to us all the things that Jesus through his sacrifice made available to us. The Spirit of God through David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. He forgives all my sins and he all my diseases he redeemed my life from destruction and crowned me with loving kindness and tender mercy what a joy david said i want to celebrate i want to rejoice because god has revealed to me all that he has made available to me through the sacrifice of his son jesus christ through the sacrifice of jesus every barrier between god and man is taken away there is no separation between god and man now god is reconciling himself to man not man reconciling himself but god is reconciling himself to human beings i think of the temple in jerusalem when jesus died on the cross you know that the temple was divided into two sessions the holy place and the holy of holies between the holy of holies and the holy place was a thick curtain separating the two nobody was permitted to enter the holy of holies it was only the high priest who was given the permission to enter the holy of holies and even the high priest could not enter the holy of holies at random he had to enter the holy of holies only once a year because the presence of god was not accessible to any person only the high priest was privileged to enter into the presence of god and that was once a year on the day of yom kippur but the, the bible teaches us when jesus 
died on the cross when he said it is finished and he said father into your hands I commit my spirit the Bible says he died and the curtain but the wonderful thing that happened in the temple he says the curtain that was separating the holy of holies from the holy place was rent into two from up down not from down up but from up to down signifying that the place is now open the place is now accessible the presence of God moved out of the Holy of Holies. Where is he going? He said, I will no longer dwell in a house built by hands. I'm now going to dwell in the heart of men and women. So through the sacrifice of Jesus, the presence of God moved from the house into the heart of men. Now, as I look at each one of you, you become the dwelling place of God. God dwells in your heart. God dwells in you. You already become the temple of the living God. You are the address of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know, God is not dwelling in you because he don't have anything to do. He is dwelling in you with all his power. Amen. He is dwelling in you with his fire. Amen. The book of Hebrews says he is a consuming fire. Amen. He is a consuming fire. I want you to know that you are the powerhouse of God. Amen. I say you are the powerhouse of God. Amen. The all powerful God dwells in you. Amen. You can look around to the demons and the devil and chest out and say greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world and if God dwells in you I want to ask you a question if God dwells in you is God going to surrender his house for the devil to to attack it with sicknesses and diseases and cockroaches God will protect his house I say God will protect his house God has a zeal for his house Jesus demonstrated this when he went to the temple the Bible says he made a whip a call and he started driving out the money changers all those that were selling all the all the kind the kind of necessary things that was being done into in the temple in Jerusalem Jesus drove them out turned the tables to I mean, threw everything away and he said my house shall be called a house of prayer Amen. my house shall be called a house of prayer Amen. he cleansed the temple Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever Amen. I have news for you he will cleanse your body he will kick out arthritis he kick out high fever he kick out tuberculosis coronavirus has no place he will cleanse and maintain his temple God's temple is holy Amen. I say God's temple is cleansed to God yes. be the glory Amen. hallelujah yes. hallelujah yes. praise God praise God praise God praise God as I proceed tonight God dawned upon my heart especially in the area of keeping your body healthy you need to understand that there are two things that Jesus accomplished on the cross for me and you there are so many people that they believe that through Jesus Christ all their sins are forgiven they think when you come to Jesus Christ all that you receive is the forgiveness of your sins and you become a new creation if that is your faith that is your belief then you are missing a lot. God has more for you than just the new birth and the forgiveness of your sins. God want to keep your body healthy. Amen. God through the sacrifice of Jesus made provision for you and me to have a healthy body. Amen. You see, I'm going to read a scripture to you and you will see that by one sacrifice, Jesus made a double provision there for everyone who will believe. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24. Let us all read it together. 
Remember our text tonight says, my people have gone into captivity because they lack knowledge. The purpose of this service tonight is to impart to you knowledge. Amen. Knowledge from God's Amen. word. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. With knowledge, you will never be deprived. Amen. You will never be pushed into darkness. Amen. You will never be denied Amen. of the best that God wants you to have in this life. Amen. Let us see what Peter said. First Peter chapter 2. First Peter. If you are there, say amen. Amen. First Peter chapter 2, right? Okay, let's read it together. First Peter 2, chapter 2, verse 24. Listen to what he said. He said, For he said, Who his own self bore our sins in his own body on what? On the tree. That we be there to sin should live unto righteousness. By whose stripes ye were what? Amen. Jesus sacrificed on the cross. He paid the price not only for our sins, but he also paid the price for me and you to be healed of every sickness or disease. It is the will of God for you to live sickness free life. Amen. It is the will of God for you to live disease free life. Amen. God wants you to have a healthy body. Amen. Oh, somebody said, but I don't know. The word of God reveals to us. Third John, God's word says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you will prosper and be in good health. God wants you to have a healthy body. Amen. God doesn't want you to carry leukemia. God doesn't want you to carry any disease out there. Pneumonia. I received a message. You know, last Tuesday, it was late in the night. And as soon as I read the message, I, I was just almost sleeping. And I slept. A brother from Pangasinan sent a message to me, reading all that he wrote about his daughter. I could see from the message that the, the brother loved his daughter. And the daughter was in this kind of condition. He said, Pastor, can you pray for me? This is the name of my daughter. I slept. How many of you believe that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is what? I slept. He was waiting but you see that i read it and then i woke up i forgot already but god quickened to me yesterday and on thursday and i started calling 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 but he don't pick the phone not knowing here he has two accounts so i said i think he has two accounts so i searched the other one and i managed to got her today in the church and then he narrated all the story. I said, don't be afraid. We serve a powerful God. Amen. We serve a strong deliverer. Amen. There is nothing that he cannot do. Amen. And then I said, I have joined the fight. So I was here. And I allowed them to lay me to, to, to form, a, to hold their hands, signifying that we are united. And I pray. Oh, I, I, I could see the response there. I said, suppose we finish. And I am believing, not 99%, I know God touched the game. Mm -hmm. I say, I know God touched the game. What, how can you know? Because I know that it is the will of God for the girl to be healed. Amen. It is the will of God for us to, to, to live without sickness. Why? Because sickness is coming from the devil and god doesn't want you to hold anything that comes from his enemy are you with me yeah, so i told her we are i told them i said we are going to resist the devil and he will flee from you yeah. we did it after that i went to call our sister marissa and then marissa picked the phone and said 
was that we are all sick in the house. <laughs> and then she was coughing, and I said, so I call at a good time. In the natural, you would say that, oh, I call at a, a wrong time. But I said, I call at a good time. Let us pray. And then the way she was also responding there. I said, tomorrow morning, we will hear good news. Rest, sleep. Be, I believe that the God that we are serving is a God. It's a God of miracles. He is bigger than every sickness. He is bigger than every disease. He is bigger than every virus. And if me and you can trust him, we will never be put to shame. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. After I talked to the brother, he said, we are, we are from Pange, we are in Pangasinan. I said, oh, I was in Pangasinan. He said, where? I said, I was in Bayamba. He said, oh, two, two barangays to Bayamba. I said I was there. Two but two barangays to but what is the name? No. No, mention the name. There is a town there. Wow. No, we are Pangasinan here, right? No, Bayamba. Not San Fabia. Lino Lingayen. Another Pangasinan here. Not Lingayen. Lingayen is the city. No, not Agupa. No. <laughs> I'm not a good parent. Sanka, no. Yes! Come on, I want all of you to clap on you. Akaba! Yeah, that is where she can be. She is the real Pangasi. 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 Hallelujah! Yes, that is where they come from. Yeah, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Listen, the point I want to bring to you, I was so confident. I have the confidence to pray for them because I know it is the will of God amen. for the, anybody to be healed. Yes, amen. Sickness is not from God. Amen. Sickness is the work of the enemy. And the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27, he said, give no place to the devil. Put it there for me. Give no place to who? To the devil. To the devil. God doesn't want you to give your your let your your liver, your kidneys, your lungs, your, your blood system. Don't give any place to the devil. If the devil try to take a place, resist him and he will flee from you. In the natural, if somebody is taking your wallet, you know that your wallet or your telephone, you will not say, Okay. No, no. You will not do that, right? You will defend and you will resist the thief with all your might. But in the spirit, the devil tried to steal your joy, your peace. And then, oh, Pastor, can you pray for me? <laughs> if somebody wants to snatch your wallet, will you call me to come and help you? Are you with me? You will fight with all your might. And if the devil wants to steal from you, fight. I said, fight. The Bible says, God opposes the prayer, but he gives grace to the humble. God will back you up. Amen. If you take a step of faith to resist the devil, he will flee from you. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God wants us to have a healthy body. Jesus, through his sacrifice, has already made provision for each one of us to have a healthy body. Amen. Not sickness and disease. I want to give you some scriptures that will confirm to you that God is on the healing side. God is not on you getting sick. Listen, there is a computer working. Listen, I'm going to give you scriptures. Each of them tells you that God wants you to live without sickness and without disease. If I give you one, it's not enough. Listen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1, it says, Every matter will be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Don't go and pick one scripture from the Bible and build a doctrine. Get a supporting scripture for those scriptures to confirm what you are. Listen. First, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. This is the third time I am here. 2 Corinthians? Chapter 1, chapter 13, verse 1. Okay, yeah. This is the third time I am coming to you. 
in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be what? Establish. Give us an NIV. Listen, this will be my third visit to you. Every matter will be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. So the subject of healing, we must get two or three witnesses to tell us that it is established. In the Old Testament, God didn't want the Israelites to be sick. And if God didn't want the Israelites to be sick in the Old Covenant, how can you dare to believe that God wants you to, seek, to be sick in the New Covenant? The Bible says the New Covenant is superior to the Old Covenant. It's better than the Old Covenant. And if in the Old Covenant God wants to be a healer of his people, how much more in the New Covenant God wants to be our healer? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, I'm giving you, if you are, I'll give you six scriptures to tell you in the area of healing, God wants you to be healed. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. First, let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26. I wanted to talk to you about the seven methods you can receive your healing. But I will postpone that. Let me talk about the will of God for you to know that God wants you to be healed. And any time any sickness attack you, you will resist it with all your might. Are you with me? Yeah, so yeah. let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 15, verses 26. Somebody say, Lord, touch the computer. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Hallelujah. The devil is a liar. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. Whether he like it or not, we are going to read it in one way or the other. Amen. We know that God wants us to be sickness free. Amen. Exodus. Okay. I want you to take your Bible. One of you take your Bible. Ali, take your Bible. And read it for us. Okay, I can read it. Exodus. Exodus chapter 15. Chapter 15 verse. Verse 26. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> see, if you will diligently listen to the voice of the Lord your God, and do what which is right in his eyes, and give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you that I put on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord, your healer. For I am the Lord, your healer. Listen, listen to what he said. He said, if you will listen diligently to the voice of the Lord, your God, and do what is right in his sight, keep, what did he say? Keep all his, keep all his commandments. And let us read it together. He said, if you can give us it in James. He said, if you would diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do what is right in his sight, keep all keep his commandments. He said, What? Give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will not. The original translation of the King James, there was a mistake. If you read the original Hebrew and the Greek version, the translation down there is not I will put. They translated it as if it is a causative. The verb is not causative, it's permissive. Are you with me? So it's supposed to be God said, I will not permit the sicknesses and the diseases that I permitted upon the Egyptians on you for i am the lord your healer why i say god will not give you sick, put sickness on you because god hasn't got any sickness in heaven are you with me Amen. god cannot give what he don't have there is no sickness in heaven therefore god cannot give sickness sickness belongs to the devil and god will never swap god will never borrow sickness from the devil and put on anybody Amen. god can permit evil but God will not send evil. So God says, I will not allow that to happen to you because I am the Lord, your 
he learned. Hallelujah. Now, I give you the second scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. Listen to Deuteronomy. Remember our, our scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 says, Every matter will be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Right? Now, let us see Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 15. He said, And the Lord will take away from thee all what? Sicknesses. There are some people dating, and the Lord will put on you all sicknesses. No! The Lord what? Will take away from you all sicknesses. And I will put none of the evil of diseases of the Egypt. Here also is the same. I will not permit the evil or the diseases of Egypt which thou knowest upon thee. But I will lay them upon them that hate you. I will permit it upon your enemies. But not you which among you will like even your child or your 